Good morning, y'all. Welcome to another vlog. It is 5.30 in the morning. I've been awake since 3.30. I was just laying in bed, tossing and turning, so many thoughts going through my head, so many things I've been thinking about, reflecting on my previous relationships and my behavior, and I have a lot of things. I thought I might as well just get up. I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep after two hours. So I'm going to make some coffee, and then I really, really feel the need to journal and get all these thoughts out of my mind. So today's Door County coffee selection is Pumpkin Spice, the perfect pairing of cinnamon cloves and nutmeg, our most popular fall coffee. I bet this is going to be good. Once again, if you're interested in the Door County uh, fall sampler pack, I'll link to that down below in the description box. I highly recommend buying it off Amazon so you can get free shipping because the shipping is outrageous on their website. All right, let's brew this up and I'll let you guys know how it is. Sorry about the darkness, but it's 530 in the morning and I don't want any bright lights in my face. So we're illuminated by my um, selenite lamp here at the desk. So one of the things that I've been thinking about is my last relationship that just ended very badly. Not only my behavior in that relationship, but how I acted after it ended. The frantic um, behaviors that I exhibited because I, did, because I didn't want to be abandoned. But I wasn't even thinking clearly about if the relationship was good for me. I only could think about my own need for emotional fulfillment and not being abandoned. So I have been idealizing my ex-boyfriend. So this is, I've talked about this numerous times, black and white thinking splitting uh, on people. So I either idealize people or devalue them. I have been devaluing Andrew as well. It's really hard for me to think of people in a gray area. They are either all good or all bad to me. So my previous boyfriend is right now the perfect man in my eyes. He can do no wrong, everything was my fault, he's awesome and amazing. And as I was tossing and turning in bed this morning, I tried to force myself to think of him objectively as a real person. Not the idealized version of him, but who he really is and, and, and what our relationship was really like. So objectively, he does have a lot of wonderful traits. He's so intelligent, adventurous, fun, outgoing. He has this amazing ability for problem solving that I really admire. He's just super interesting, just a really cool human being. But he does have flaws. Now, I'm not going to list off his flaws here because that's not fair to him. But I'm going to write them down for myself in my journal and try to see him to see the whole picture and realize that he's not perfect and that's really hard for me to do because I can go I will go from him being perfect to realizing the relationship is over and then just completely devaluing him and I don't want to do that that's what I did with my ex-husband so I'm going to start referring to Andrew as my ex-husband in these vlogs even though um we are still legally married just because I think that's gonna make it easier. So my ex-husband, I did the same thing to him. When he first left me, I was frantic for him not to leave. I did all this crazy shit trying to get him not to leave and to come back to me um, because I was terrified of being abandoned and being left alone. That was the only reason for it. I, the relationship was clearly toxic and bad for both of us, but I couldn't let go of it because I couldn't stand to be abandoned. So he was the perfect man to me no matter what he had done, no matter how many times he had cheated, whatever he had done, he was still perfect in my eyes. He was still idealized in my eyes. Now, after I had some time away, then I began to devalue him and just call him a piece of shit. He's worthless. He treated me like shit. He was horrible. And um, I realize people get really upset about this, but you have to understand that in my mind, that's, I, I switch back and forth. So now I'm also trying to sit and think of him as a whole human being and, and think of the good things about him and the bad instead of just focusing on all the bad, which is what I had been doing. And I have to try to look at things in the gray area, which is very uncomfortable for me. But um, that's kind of something that I'm thinking about this morning and, and, and working on is my splitting behavior towards people. And so I'm going to be... Um, journaling on that and reflecting on that this morning. Okay, I think I've rambled long enough at 5.30 in the morning and it's time to go make coffee. Well, I will say this smells fantastic. I did have some Starbucks pumpkin spice and I didn't really care for it that much. So I hope this is gonna be better for me. All right, let's try it. Oh my God, that is so good. That's way better than the Starbucks one. Highly recommend the pumpkin spice. All right, you guys know the deal. It's journaling time. I am gonna journal here um, probably for about an hour or so. 
and then I will be back and hopefully it'll be daylight by then. All right, the sun is up. It's about 8 a.m. now. Um, I finished my journaling. I went and laid down, tried to lay down for a little while, but I couldn't go back to sleep even though I feel incredibly tired. Uh, today I'm just gonna be tired, I think. Um, the dogs and I went for our mindfulness walk. The dogs are having their playtime back there. <laughs> their morning playtime after they have their breakfast. Um, we went for our mindfulness walk and that was really nice. It was really cool outside and the weather's really nice this early in the morning. I don't film on my mindfulness walks because I'm trying to be mindful and filming would just take me out of that state of mind. Um, I do find that my mind wanders quite a bit, but I all, I'm just practicing every day, bringing it back to the moment, bringing it back to myself. And it's not easy for me, but I'm practicing it every day. Um, that's going to help with my emotional regulation as well. All right, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, my goals for today are to edit and publish a vlog, to clean one more room of the house. I'm going to clean the living room today, to cook a meal for myself, and I want to eat at least two times today. And I know how that sounds, but trust me, that's an improvement over what I've been doing. So I want to eat at least twice today. I want to drink water and no alcohol. I did not drink yesterday, okay? October 1st, did not drink. October 2nd, not gonna drink. And then also uh, do my BB BPD workbook chapter for today and make a batch of face cream for myself because I want to start getting back into my hobbies and the things that I enjoy doing things that give me my identity and make me feel good. Um, even though it's hard right now, the pain is still, um, the pain of losing my relationship is still here, but I have to just keep pushing forward and working on myself and trying to get better. And every day I'm gonna get a little bit better and a little bit better. All right, so for now, I'm gonna stop talking at you and I'm gonna go edit and publish this video that I need to get out and uh, then we will get started on my goals for the day. Well, it's about 10.30 now and I just finished editing the vlog that I recorded yesterday and that is uploading. Um, so I'm feeling very hungry today and I have some leftover food in the fridge I think I'm gonna eat for my first meal of the day. And then I'm actually gonna try and cook later. <laughs> Um, I want to cook some kielbasa and eggs, but right now I ha I'm going to have to go to town in about 30 minutes to pick up my Walmart order, so I just want something kind of quick. So last night I ordered DoorDash McDonald's for dinner, and I ate a quarter pounder with cheese, no bun, and then I had these two left over because I was just too full after that. So I'm going to have these for my brunch this morning. I'm just going to eat these cold right here at my table, and... Then we'll get ready to go pick up uh, the stuff from Walmart. So I know this is not the healthiest thing I could be eating. But right now, I'm just trying to take baby steps every single day and make improvement in all areas of my life, or at least some areas of my life every single day. So that's why my goal now is just to eat twice a day, no matter what it is. Just two meals a day, that is my goal. And if I can hit that, then I can start working on maybe three times a day or maybe improving the quality. But I have to start... I'm at the bottom. I just have to start eating at least twice a day. That's an improvement over not eating anything. So um, I'm not too worried about the quality of the food or how healthy it is. As long as it's low carb, carnivore-ish, I'm okay with that. And I'm just trying to make progress every day. I'm not gonna be perfect overnight. So I just got the message that my Walmart pickup order is ready and I'm literally gonna drive down there in my pajamas. I just, um, Really don't care. I'm gonna put my sandals on. I'm gonna drive down there and pick up my couple of groceries and a blender that I got so that I can hopefully make some face cream today. All right, I'm at Walmart waiting for my order. I just got a couple of groceries and then the blender. I didn't get very much stuff, but, but I thought if I did a pickup order, it would force me to actually like go outside and leave the house. Um, so I decided to do that instead of having, having it delivered. All right, back seat shot of the groceries. Now I'm headed home. Okay, so I got home, got the groceries in, and I was overwhelmed by a feeling of grief and loneliness. So I kind of had a little breakdown and had to cry for a little while. Um, once again, used some more of my skills to calm myself down. One of the things that I'm doing is uh, putting a rag, a wet rag in the freezer so that it's really super cold and putting that on my face. It really calms you down in the moment. Um, that's one of my like go-to moves that I learned when I first started therapy. It really helps. 
but sometimes I almost feel guilty that I need to resort to those kind of skills in order to calm myself down. Um, once again, I want to reach out for emotional validation from another person. I want somebody else to make me feel worthy and um, still, not, still not finding it within myself, but I am able to at least calm myself down enough so that I don't um, at least go seeking anymore, I guess I should say. So anyway, just wanted to share. I'm still having episodes like this, but I am able to soothe myself and get myself out of it um, in, a, in a shorter time than I have before. So little, little progress every day. Um, let me show you what I got at Walmart. It's not very much. None of my Walmart hauls would be complete without a 10 pack of Coke Zero. I also bought another chuck roast because I knew this would be um, an easy way for me to have a large amount of good food available to me. Um, so I will probably put this in the crock pot tomorrow morning um, so I can have it for dinner tomorrow night. I got another package of my Panino pepperoni cheese sticks. These make really good carnivore depression food, okay? Because sometimes I just, I need food in me and these are just really fast. I can just open it up and eat them. And then finally, I needed trash bags, so I got a box of trash bags. Real interesting stuff here. And uh, then the blender is still down in the car. I'm gonna go get it before I get ready to make my um, face cream. Now I'm gonna harness the dogs and take them for a little afternoon walk to try to help myself feel better as well. Um, practice some more mindfulness and spend some time with the babies. Come here, Pop Pops. Time to get your harnesses on. Come on, babies. Oh, are you ready to go for a walk? Are you ready to go for a walk? Yes, you are. Little dog cam for you guys there. I'm not gonna film uh, when I'm actually walking because I'm still not filming with my phone. Um, and plus I want to practice mindfulness while I'm walking now because I really need it. Um, but I'm gonna take them for a walk around the property here. So we'll be back, won't we, Morty? Yes, we will. Okay, so it's about 12.45 in the afternoon, and I have been answering comments on my last vlog. Thank you guys so much for all your words of support and kindness. I truly appreciate you, um, those of you that are sticking by to watch my journey. So now what I would like to do is work on the next chapter of my Borderline Personality Disorder workbook. I will have this link down in the description box if you're interested in checking this out for yourself. I highly recommend it. It's by Dr. Daniel Fox, who also has a YouTube channel. Um, and he specializes in BPD. So yesterday I did chapter one and now chapter two is titled, Where Does BPD Come From? So we're gonna start looking at um, the roots of BPD, including genetics, psychological and social influences, and brain functioning. There are basically three factors that someone has to have in order to develop BPD, and that's a genetic predisposition, an invalidating environment that they grow up in as children, and brain functioning. Research has shown that individuals with BPD have similar brain functioning. For people diagnosed with BPD, areas of the brain that impact their ability to control impulses and aggression, to accurately recognize emotional expressions in others, to calm down after getting excited or angry, or to reason through problems when agitated or angry tend to show activity. These findings that individuals with BPD have a brain that functions differently from those who do not have BPD hasn't been attributed to just one cause. It's believed that the roots of genetics, psychological and social influences, and early experiences play a part in the development and functioning of your brain. So people with BPD are neurodivergent. Our brain is wired differently um, for people who don't have BPD. So please remember, it's not all your fault. If you have this condition, it is not your fault. It is your responsibility to try and get better, and it's hard, but you can do it, I'm gonna do it too. So I'm gonna read through this chapter and then there are some um, activities to do. So I will tell you guys about those when I get there. Okay, so I really wanna share this with you guys because I think this is really important. This is from the book, Interpersonal Diagnosis and Treatment of Personality Disorders by Lorna Smith Benjamin. This is a sequence of early experiences that contributes to the development of BPD. And this is actually a, a freaking blueprint of my life. Chaos and crises were common in the home growing up. When the home was calm, the child felt bored, empty, and spiritless. There were abuse and abandonment experiences that resulted in the child being left alone without protection, companionship, or activities to build herself up. The child was left alone for hours or days while the caregiver was out with a boyfriend or girlfriend or friends or using drugs or alcohol and not paying attention to the child and what he or she was doing. 
The child was seen as a defector when he or she tried to break out of the family system, receiving the message that remaining dependent on the family's sickness was best. Shared suffering earned love and respect, but caregivers expressed this love and respect as emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, and this child experienced hurt, pain, and neglect. When the child was sick enough, broken enough, and had suffered enough, the family would show love and concern. Since this is what the child really wanted, he or she learned to stay sick and miserable while growing into adulthood. As a result, the child learned to be manipulative and hurtful to self and others to get needs and wants, love and concern met. That is probably the best breakdown I've ever seen of the factors or background um, that someone with BPD has most likely gone through. This is this was actually my exact childhood right here. It makes a lot of sense that I developed BPD. Also, I do believe my father had it. Um, he had all of the symptoms, but men are not often um, diagnosed with BPD, and especially not men of his age group. Um, he's passed away now, but he was born in, um, this, in 1960, so he never got a diagnosis for it, but I'm pretty sure he had it. So I had the genetic component, I had the invalidating background growing up, and I also had, I must have had the uh, brain structure to develop BPD. And then later in this chapter, it says, I think this is a really important thing to keep in mind, if situations, experiences, actions, and reactions influenced how your brain developed and now operates, then you can change your brain functioning by doing things differently, such as employing new strategies to overcome your BPD. It is possible to rewire your brain and not do these BPD behaviors anymore. And that is what I'm trying to do. So the first exercise in this chapter is to identify family members and close relatives who appear to meet the criteria for BPD and then describe their relationship issues, behaviors, and problems with mood and impulse control that are similar to yours. So I'm going to blur out the names because I don't want to, um, you know, put anybody's business on here. But these are three of my close family members that... I do believe exhibit the symptoms of BPD and this is generational. So I feel like um, this was probably genetically passed down and also psychologically like environmentally passed down to me. I was already aware of this but it does help to kind of write it down and look at it and the workbook says this process is important. It will help you recognize your roots and develop the insight and strengths to overcome BPD so it's worth doing. So this next exercise was to consider the psychological and social influences and early experience Experiences may have contributed to the development of your BPD. So I checked every single box um, except for one. So these were all the same things that I read to you earlier in that little blueprint. Um, all of these things happened to me um, except for my parent or caregiver was often out with boyfriends or girlfriends. That's not true but my dad always was out with his friends so I still feel like that can still count but I didn't check it. Um, and so then you have to fill in how much you think genetics and brain function contributes to your disorder and how much you think psychological and social influences. And to me, I think it's 50-50. I think I had the genetics and brain function for it, and then I had the chaotic and validating environment, and together, that's 100% BPD. And may, it may even be more of the psychological and social influences and early experiences, actually. Maybe 60-40. So another important thing that I just read that I wanted to share is um, you may feel like you're doomed to always have issues with BPD. This doesn't have to be the case. If it were, no one with unhappy beginnings would ever overcome past hurts. BPD doesn't mean you're destined for loss, suffering, and pain forever. Rather, knowing the roots of the disorder will help you overcome its impact. You have to know where you're from to know where you're going. So I guess that's the purpose of this chapter is just to sort of help you reflect on how you became this way, your roots, your past, and all that. And so now I'm going to do the little what you learned from this chapter exercise, and then that'll be my BPD workbook work for today. So it's about 2 p.m. now, and... I'm feeling very lonely and kind of down today like I don't know I'm feeling a lot of pain in my the place in my in my heart like that that hole that I need to fill and I can't fill it because there's nobody there to fill it for me and I can't figure out how to fill it myself so it's just hurting a lot today. It's like you have an open wound in your in your soul is what it feels like. And I know that sounds dramatic, but that's really what it feels like. So I'm having a hard time getting anything done at this point, but I'm going to push through and force myself. I need to clean another room of the apartment. So today I plan to clean the living room and I'm going to do it. So the living room is 
pretty much a mess. I still have my suitcase from when my ex and I went to Dallas and my bag from SpaCon, so I gotta deal with that. Um, there's just stuff everywhere that needs to be cleaned up. Over here, there's just a bunch of clutter. I mean, it's not bad, it's just cluttered and messy. better the living room is clean morty what are you doing you like the clean living room yes you do <laughs> Bubba's looking for a toy um so yeah everything's clean now it feels so much nicer in here got my desk cleaned up dining room's clean kitchen's clean living room's clean tomorrow we tackle the laundry well, it's about four in the afternoon now, and I have been dealing with some strong emotions this afternoon. Um, just trying to get myself through, soothe myself some more. I mean, that's all I do. All, that's all I do. And I found another um, kind of sensory thing that I can do that helps me, and that's pacing. Which I know sounds really weird, but for some reason it kind of soothes me to just like pace back and forth through my apartment uh, when I'm feeling really distressed. So... I started doing that, still using the cold water, and I think I'm going to have to take a bubble bath as well tonight. So I really wanted to make some uh, face cream today, but I'm just, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it today. I think I'm going to make that our project for tomorrow. So today's project is we're going to cook a meal. So I am going to prepare some eggs uh, with kielbasa and I'm gonna eat that with some salsa. So I'm gonna use these beef smoked sausages, um, kielbasa that I got from Walmart. And the first thing I'm gonna do is slice one of these up into like little rounds. I'm starting to think this wasn't the best knife for the job, <laughs> but it'll work. And then I'm gonna cook these up in a skillet with some butter until they're nice and I don't know, browned, I guess. And then I'm gonna add in some eggs and make like a little egg scramble out of it. I think it's gonna be really good. I wanted to cook something for myself today and this was something easy that I felt like I could do. Okay, I got my skillet here and I'm gonna put some butter in it. Get off the knife, get off the knife. And then I'm gonna turn it to medium heat. Let the butter melt and then we'll put the sausages in. While I'm waiting for the butter to melt, I wanted to talk about, I don't know if you've heard of the YouTube channel called Crappy Childhood Fairy. People kept recommending it to me and I finally started watching her videos and they have been tremendously helpful for me. If you experience childhood trauma or you have PTSD or CPTSD, I can highly recommend that channel. Um, I've just been binge watching the videos and she has a free course that I signed up for that's supposed to teach you a technique of basically journaling and meditation to kind of help with some of that stuff. And I will take any resources I can get right now and especially since it's free I went ahead and signed up for the course and I'm gonna start that after I eat my dinner so I'm really looking forward to that and I'll let you guys um, know how that goes too okay uh, I'm gonna put the sausages in get my spatula we're just gonna fry these up until they look brown to my liking. Meanwhile, I've got my eggs over here in a measuring cup, and I remember that I broke my small Pyrex measuring cup, so I need to get another one of those. I'll use the big one for now, it'll be fine. Oh, there's like a little piece of shell in there I'm gonna have to dig out. I'm gonna have this ready to pour in as soon as our sausages are done. And I am not gonna leave the room and burn them. I'm gonna stay right here and babysit them. I don't want this to be another burnt bacon situation. All right, the sausages look nice and brown now, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump in the egg. 
I got two eggs and one sausage, and I think that's going to be plenty just for me. I'm not in the mood for any cheese, but this would be good with some cheese in it. I don't know. I might throw a slice of pepper jack on here. Now that I think about it, I think I'll put some pepper jack on. Give it a little more of a southwest kind of flavor since I'm going to eat it with salsa. Wow, it didn't take long for the eggs to cook at all, did it? Let me turn the heat off. And we'll throw a slice of pepper jack and just melt that in there. That should be good. Alright y'all, I'm going to throw this on a plate now. And that's going to be my dinner. Alright, here's my dinner plate. I'm going to have a Coke Zero, the first one I've had today. I'm going to put a little salsa on top of this. And probably watch some YouTube videos while I eat. Cooking for yourself can be hard when you're dealing with depression and... You know, sometimes just something easy like this, it makes you feel good about yourself because you got something done. It's really good, too. Okay, I'm happy with how that turned out, so I'm going to enjoy my dinner, and I'll see you guys when I'm done. I just finished cleaning the kitchen. The dogs are decided to play right here beside me right now when I'm recording. But anyway, I just got done cleaning the kitchen after my dinner, and it felt good to accomplish that. I just got to show you guys this dogs oh now they're gonna pay attention to me now they're gonna pay attention to me so i just kind of wanted to go over my day and what i accomplished today so i did not accomplish all my goals um one of my goals was to make homemade face cream and i just didn't get there um today i had a lot of emotions that i was dealing with but i do feel um that i accomplished a lot by um soothing myself and getting me th getting myself through those times um in a healthy way i didn't text my ex i didn't um do anything destructive i didn't do any drugs or alcohol i just used the tools in my toolbox to um to get myself through it and process those emotions in a healthy way so um, i'm proud of myself for that that's progress for me um, it might seem like baby steps to some people but it's progress for me and I did meet I did meet many of my goals today. I got the living room cleaned up. I got a chapter done on my BPD workbook. And I am not drinking alcohol. I didn't drink yesterday. I'm not going to drink today. What I'm going to do tonight instead of drinking is I'm going to go take a long, hot bubble bath. And while I'm in there, I'm going to start the Crappy Childhood Fairies um, course called The Daily Practice, which is supposed to teach you this... Um, meditation journaling thing i think i talked about it earlier that's supposed to help you with healing um some of your childhood trauma so i'm really looking forward to that um i'll link to it down below in the description box if you're interested in that like i said it's free and you can just go sign up for it and, and start doing it i also did my journaling my mindfulness exercises and um, i feel like today was a pretty good day even though i had a lot of emotional ups and downs Overall, I still feel like it was a good day as far as my progress, my mental health progress. And I ate twice today, so another goal reached. So the only goal I didn't get to was making my face cream, but I think we'll do that for tomorrow's uh, vlog. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching this. I truly appreciate those of you who are sticking around and supporting me on my um, recovery process. And I just appreciate all of you and thank you for watching me for Vlogtober. Um, I've got a lot more stuff planned for the rest of the month. Uh, I'm doing the best I can right now. I am going through it, but, um, you know, doing the best I can and going to keep making content for you. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.